All right, hello everyone, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I wasn't going to start this stuff until next week, but I'm trying to get a little bit of a running start, okay? Everything I'm about to show you as far as these uh, PowerPoints, you're going to get all this stuff next week. I just wanted to send everything out to you in a morning where I have a chance to go through it all first, make sure there isn't anything I shouldn't be sending, and make sure that everything I should be sending is there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start going over the PowerPoint slides that come with Murox C Sharp 8th edition. You'll notice there's only 18 of them for the first chapter, so I'll maybe bop in and out of this. So let's see. So chapter one is entitled How to Get Started with Visual Studio. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to install Visual Studio, and it did start up. So we will look at how to use Visual Studio to perform the operations that are shown there. Simple things like opening and closing a project or a solution, building and running a project, etc. All right, those are in our applied area. In our knowledge, describe the main difference between a desktop app and a web app. Next, name three platforms you can use to develop Windows apps with .NET. Name three platforms you can use. I guess that's the same one, web apps. Number four, name three programming language you can use to develop .NET applications. Number five, distinguish between .NET Framework and .NET Core. Number six, describe the two main components of .NET. Number seven, in general terms, describe the C-sharp compiler, MISL, which is the Microsoft Intermediate Language, the assembly, and the CLR, which is the common language runtime. Number eight, describe the use of each of these windows in the Visual Studio IDE. IDE is an acronym for Integrated Development Environment. And those are the form designer, the code editor, and the solution explorer. You're going to see all of them in a couple minutes. Finally, number nine, in general terms, describe how to use Visual Studio to target a version of .NET. So we're going to look at all this. This is the kind of thing that we're going to create right here all right in fact i think what i'm going to do this is not meant to be a, a g whiz or a oh golly type of thing but i'm going to grab this right here i'm going to make a picture of it by hitting my print screen key then i'm going to go into paint here and i'm going to grab it and um just like that. All right. And I'm going to build that for you just so you see it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. We're doing fine. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up Visual Studio. I'm not going to put the code in, not in this chapter. And um, I, like I said, I'm just going to try to build this for you. We'll see how it works. All right. So. I'm starting up Visual Studio 2022 right there. And it's coming up. <clears throat> and I want to choose on here, create a new project right there. All right. And here's one of the first things you're going to have to learn as we take a look in here. Okay. You'll notice it says console app and blazer app, and literally, there's a whole bunch of things in here. We're going to be working with two kinds of applications. Those are console apps and Windows Forms apps. So I'm going to type in here console app, and you'll notice there's basically two of them in here. One says console app, one says console app.net framework. All right. You always will want the reason I said there's just those two. They're the only ones that have C sharp by them. Let's try the console app first. I'm just going to try this right here and I'm going to click next. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to keep this or anything anyway. All right. And I'm going to click next. And next and create. Okay. 
And I want to, I can look at it and know whether this is the one I'm looking for or it's not the one I'm looking for. All right, it should come up in a matter of seconds here. And it is not the one I'm looking for. So I'm going to get rid of this. Thought there was a delete in here. There's a remove there. Okay, it's gone. All right, so what we'll want then in here is I'm going to get rid of this totally. No, I'm not going to save it or anything. So I'm going to start up Visual Studio again. And I'm going to click Create a New Project. And this time, under Console Apps, all right, I am going to choose the Console App. <clears throat> so here where it says Console App, I'm going to choose the one that says .NET Framework and C Sharp right there. I can either double click on this or single click on it and click next. <clears throat> now it's going to ask me where do I want to put it. So I'm going to create very quickly. I'm going to create a folder over here that I'm just going to call test because I'm going to run a couple tests for you. All right. So this will be console test. Okay. And we're going to put it into a folder on the desktop that's named test. All right, so we've got that. So console test and test. Then it asks for a solution name. Now I don't want, I could give it the same name. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to type here test. And then I'm going to click create. All right, now I'm going to grab this and make a quick picture of this. Okay, it's going to come up right now. This is what I want to show you for now. All right, but before I do, I'm going to go and just like we did before, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste this in. And then I'm going to just grab what I'm looking for here, which is pretty much this. All right, so why am I doing this? Well, if you look here, I save this project as console test. And you'll notice that I've got something here that says console test. That's what it is. This is my project right there. My project exists under a solution that is named test. And it is saved on a file or a folder, I should say, on my desktop called test. So that's all that stuff. Okay. And we don't care really about this because we this isn't the program that we want to write. We want to write the one that was shown in the book. But just to show you this, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in two lines. I'm going to type in first console dot write line. And I'm going to put in here, welcome to C sharp. Enjoy. All right, and then I'm going to put a semicolon at the end. And on the next line, I'm going to type in console.readline. I'm not going to even explain this right this second, but this is what I've got in here. All right, so file, save all, and I'm going to run it by clicking this green diamond right here. And I want you to see what's going to come up on the screen. It'll be a DOS or black window here. Notice it says, welcome to C-sharp, enjoy. And as soon as I hit enter, the program stops running. That very simply is a console application. All right. And I wanted, I wanted to show you that so I can contrast that by showing you a Windows Forms app. All right. So I'm going to, again, now I'm going to right mouse click on my solution. And I'm going to choose add new project and now i want to come in here and type in windows forms app and you'll notice again there's one here and there's one here and i think like before we want the one that says dot net framework now again i can single click on it and click next but i'm going to double click on it so you can watch me do that 
All right. And it says, what do you want to call this? All right. And I'm going to, I called my other one console test. So I'm going to call this one form test. It's smart enough that it's going to put it right underneath my test folder. That's what I want. And I'm going to click create. All right. Doesn't look like much, but now what I want to do in this gray box right here, and I'm going to make it a little smaller, about like that. And I want to come in and try to create this for you. All right. Now I'm making that, let me make that a little smaller. So let's see. All right, and I don't expect this make, to make a whole boatload of sense right now to you. But what I want to mention is this is called a form. So is this. On the form, I have a few things. First of all, I've got some text here that says calculate investment. Mine right now only says form one, but I'm going to change it. So it says calculate investment. Just like it shows here, I've got a minus sign, a, a square, and an X. The minus sign means minimize. The square means maximize. The X means close. Then inside of here, this is my UI or my user interface. Let's start from the bottom. I've got two buttons here, one that says calculate and one that says exit right there. I've got four of what are called text boxes. One, two, three, four. And you'll notice the bottom one is gray, which means that's a read-only text box which means I can't put anything in there myself, only the program can. In addition to the four text boxes, I have four labels right here. All right, and I've got here, this right here is called a group box. And inside of it, it has two, what are called radio buttons. One that says future value, one that says monthly investment. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to attempt to make this in here. All right, so let's just go through the steps. First, we've got calculate investment up here. So I don't want it to say form one. So I'm going to click in here. And again, we're going to go through all this as a class. View, and I'm going to go to properties window, which is down near the bottom, and there it is. And where my text is, I want it to say instead of form one, I want it to say calculate investment. All right, so right here, I want this to say calculate investment. And it's kind of hard to tell, but that's what it says here now. All right, then if you remember, I have two buttons down here, one that says calculate and one that says exit. Well, to show those, I'm going to bring up I'm going to view here, and I'm going to find a thing that's called my toolbox <clears throat> right there. Now I can't see my form anymore. So what I want to do is I want to pin my toolbox by clicking that little stick pin, and now I'm going to start putting stuff in here. Like what, Jeff? Well, I'm going to click on all Windows forms, and I'm going to drag out a button, and... <clears throat> Just one is fine for now. I'm going to make it the size I want it to be. I'll make it bigger like that. And now I've got two of them. And again, one will say calculate and one will say exit in just a minute. All right, now I want to put in, I want to find text box here. And I'm going to put in one of those right there. And in fact, I want to put in four of these. So there's my four text boxes. Now I want four labels. Now these are going to look real small until I make some changes. All right, so there it is. It looks real small, like I said. What I have to do is I have to click on it. And then come over here, and over here where it says auto size, I want to set that from true to false. And now you'll notice I can make this bigger. Okay? 
So I'm going to make three of these. And there are my labels, my text boxes, my buttons. I'm going to find a group box here. There it is. And if you remember, that had two radio buttons in it. So I'm going to find those. And I'm going to put those in there. There's the first radio button. And there is the second radio button right there. All right, now it may not look exactly like it does in the book, so let's do a little bit of work on it to make it look a little nicer. I'm going to highlight all of this stuff here. Again, we will go over all of this together. And I'm going to tell it to change the size of my text. What do I mean? Well, there's a thing here that says font. And I'm going to set it so everything is 20-point font, bold, Arial, because I like Arial. And you can see it's already been changing. All right. So let's start by this. These are kind of being cut off now. So let's fix those so they're not being cut off. There we go. All right. So we've got those. It's looking a little better now. Let's do the same thing up here. All right. So again, I'll come up and I will set my... Font size to 20, bold, Arial. There you go. Now that looks a little nicer. Now, don't worry. We're not done yet. But one thing you should always be doing when you create things like this is naming them. And there's a naming convention that this goes by. For instance, button start with BTN. So, whoops, so I'm going to change the name of this button from button one, which it's called right now, to BTN calculate. And then I'm going to change the text in there from button one to calculate. Now I'm going to go to my button two. All right. And let's move these so they line up a little nice. There we go. So this button two will now be BTN exit. And the text in that button will say exit. All right, getting there. All right, so looks like that needs to be moved over a little. And these labels that are here, what do they say? Monthly investment, yearly interest rate. So we're going to put in here monthly investment. So this will become LBL for a label. Monthly investment. Now, this may not be big enough to hold it, and if it's not, we'll make it bigger. You can see it's not big enough, so I'm going to move that over. There we go. All right, so that looks a little better. I think this second one here, I believe it said yearly interest rate. Let's double check. Yearly interest rate. So this will become LBL, yearly interest rate. And I will change the name or the text in there to yearly interest rate. There it is. All right. My next one will be, I think it's number of years for right here. Let's double check. No. Number of years and future value. So let's get both of those. So this will become LBL, number of years. And we'll change this to number of years. All right. And finally, this one will be future value. And the name of it will be LBL Future Value. Now, not a big thing, not a big thing, but, but what I like to do, a couple things. First of all, I like to write justify these so they're 
pushing or smushing almost right against here. So I'm going to highlight these. And I'm going to go down to here to where it says text align. And I'm going to change that to in the center, right justified. Okay. Looks a little different, but they're lined up now. I like that. Okay. Now, this is LBL monthly investments. So this one is a text box. It's going to be TXT monthly investment. And I'm not going to put anything in there. This will be TXT yearly interest rate. This will be TXT number of years. And finally, this will be TXT future value. All right. Now, that's all fine. I like what goes into here to be centered. So I'm going to highlight all these, go down to the bottom, and under text align, I'm going to make sure it's set to center. There we go. Finally, in here, I've got these two radio buttons. First of all, the text here that says group box is way too big. So that should say calculate, and it's got future value and monthly investment. So this should say calculate. But I want this text right here, this text, to be much smaller. So I'm going to try to see if I can cut down just that text to about half the size it is. 10. Now that fixed that, but it didn't fix these. I don't know if I can do just do both of them or not do both of them. Good, I can't. There, there's one. And here's the other one. In fact, this got kind of screwed up, so. All right. I want this to be bold again in Arial. There we go. All right. Finally, this is supposed to say here, calculate. All right, which is fine. And it's a group box. So I'll just call it GB for group box. GB calculate. All right, this first one right here, this first button, radio button, we're going to learn all about these later. It should say future value. So I'm going to call this RAD, which is what you usually call for radio buttons. So RAD, sorry, RAD future value and RAD monthly investment. So RAD future value. And the wordage on here will be future value. And this one will be called RAD monthly investment. And the text in there will be monthly investment. And it looks like that one needs to be a little bit bigger. Okay. Let's make these two a little bit smaller, the, the text that's actually in here for these two. All right. I'm going to see if I can change that. So let's do them one at a time. So this one, instead of being 20, I'm going to make it, uh, let's make, let's make it 16. And I want to do the same thing with that one. Now they both fit in there just fine, I think. There we go. Come on. There you go. Come on. There. Now, I don't want to be able to move anything in here anymore. If this is actually looking pretty much the way that I want it to look. All right. Not perfect, but it's getting there. It's pretty much the way I want this to look. So what I want to do is what's referred to is I want to lock my interface right now into place.
And if you say, well, how do you do that? I'm going to show you right now. All right. So I highlight everything, and I'm going to highlight everything by just clicking in here and doing a Control A. Now it's all highlighted. Then I'm going to right mouse click on it, and I'm going to choose Lock Controls. Now they can't move. They're all stuck where they are, and that's good. But one thing I do want to do here, it's not a biggie, but under monthly investment, I want a semicolon at the end. Oops, I'm sorry, a colon at the end. Try that again. Okay, let's try that again. I want a colon at the end. There it is. I want one after a yearly interest rate. Again, a colon. Well, it looks like it needs to be a little bigger. We'll fix it in a second. I want one after a number of years. And I want one after a future value. All right. Let me take these. And I've got to unlock it. And again, you might think right now, I'm never going to get this stuff. You're going to be amazed at how fast you are going to get this stuff, all of you. All right, let me move this. I'm going to come over in one more time, unlock these controls. Whoops. That's not too bad. Now, it isn't perfect, but if you take a look at what I've just made, probably in about five or 10 minutes, and you compare it to what's shown in the book. Again, it isn't perfect, but it sure as heck doesn't look too bad either. All right. Theirs is a little wider, but actually it's because I made that bigger. That's the size it really was. Okay. So what I wanted to show you right there quickly was how you can go in and build a project. Now, it won't do a darn thing when we run it, just so you know. Well, in fact, it's running the old one. So we have to tell it to run this one by right mouse clicking on here and choosing set as startup project. So when we run this now, it will run, but it doesn't do anything. I can click in this one or in this one. I can put stuff in here if I want to. But when I click these buttons, nothing happens. So I can click X right here. And I want this one right here should be read only. How do I do that? I'm going to click in here and, and I'm going to look for a read only. There it is. And I'm going to choose true. And you'll notice it becomes gray. So pretty much my entire interface has now been built. Good. So let's jump back into the book. Because it took me, oh, I'm going a half an hour. All right. Whoops. Oh, that's chapter three. I want chapter one. There it is. So we built that now. Okay. That is a Windows desktop app. It runs on the desktop as opposed to if we'd made this a web app where it would run under a browser. In this class, we are building desktop applications, either console desktop applications or Windows Forms app desktop applications. Three platforms that you could use here, as far as we're concerned, there's only one. And that is the first one, Windows Forms. We're doing WinForms apps in this class. So when we build forms, the only one we care about in here are Windows Forms. That's it. Don't worry about Presentation Foundation or Universal Windows Platform. We're not using them. All right. Three platforms for developing web apps with .NET. Guess what? You will be using the middle one, those of you probably everybody who next summer is going to take the AWD 1115 
database driven website development two class. All right, you will be using ASP.NET Core MVC, which stands for Model View Controller. All right, you've already seen this, but we downloaded the Community Edition. As I mentioned, there's also a Professional Edition and an Enterprise Edition. You can use those for, I think it's a month, for free. I just recommend that's these two. I recommend going right with a Community Edition. You can actually, when you are building applications in Visual Studio, there's three programming languages you can use. When I first started teaching this stuff, and this was at a different school than Rankin Technical College, nobody used C Sharp. Everybody used Visual Basic.net. But that's very much waned. C Sharp is... I, I call C Sharp Microsoft's answer to Java. All right. People from Microsoft don't like that, but that's kind of what it is. All right. F Sharp was supposed to be Microsoft's foray, and that was going to be their version of JavaScript, which never really came to be. So we only care about C Sharp. We care about Windows Forms. Next semester, it'll be ASP.NET Core MVC. We care about the Community Edition, and we care about C Sharp. So this is our IDE. IDE is an acronym which stands for Integrated Development Environment. Now, you've seen some of this stuff, but if you look up here, up at the top, we've got a menu. All right. Some, but not all of the things in the menu, are shown down here as icons. This is my toolbox. This is called the form designer. That's where you build your user interface if you're doing a Windows Forms app. This is called the Solution Explorer. It's kind of like File Explorer. It shows you everything that you've got in that folder. And this is called the Properties window. You're going to learn about each and every one of these. All right. The next thing that's shown in here, as you can see, is it says how a C-sharp application is compiled and run. All right. Now, this is the kind of thing you may be asked a question or questions about this on the, um, on the written tests. But other than that, that's all you'll need it for. All right. You can read what's in the book because I don't want to go over it. This is your start window. I showed you that before. Now, if you've got an existing project and you want to open it up, you can open it up right there. If you want to get a new project, you go right here. Probably those are the only two things that you're going to use, are either this or this. This, as it says, if you click the open project, so if you click on one of these, or if you clicked on the open a project or a solution, you'll get this. All right, I'm going to show you as we get into this the way I do things. I'm not saying that the way I teach this, the way that I set up project projects rather, is the best way. But what I will claim is what I try to show you in this class is the most intuitive way of doing things. All right. So this will be a code window, and that's what we're going to write in a bit. The Solution Explorer, as I mentioned, there's the name of your solution. This solution has one project in it called Financial Calculations. That project has in it some dependencies, and that's these things in here. It has a .cs file, which stands for C Sharp. It's got a form file right here, another form file here, another form file here, and a program.cs file. You're going to be learning about these and utilizing these as the semester goes on. All right. Now, sooner or later, you're going to do something you didn't mean to do. 
What do you mean, Jeff? Well, if you look right here, all the stuff that's in here, it's all floating. So I can click here and I can move that over here and I can move, take this and move it over here and I can take uh, view properties window. Okay. Oh, and I guess that's holding both right now. There's, you know, some uh, sooner or later, something like that's going to happen. And you're going to be like, oh, I just wanted to go back to where it was. So I'm going to show you how you do that. You click tools. You go to import and export settings. Tools, import and export settings. You want to go to reset all settings, but you don't need to save this. So reset all settings. Go to next. Says you want to save what you've just done here? No, I don't. So no, just reset the settings and send it back. Click next again and make sure this says Visual C Sharp. Click finish, click close, and everything goes back to where it was before. All right. The only reason I show that to people is sooner or later, it's going to happen that you do that, be it purposely or accidentally. It just is. That's just what people do. All right. All right. Let's go on. Oops. All right. We are 16 slides into 18 in here. So we're just about done with this first chapter. All right. So there's a project properties window. Okay. How do you get there? All right. You go to when you're in your project, you go to project and on the very bottom, properties. And there are different things that you can set up in here. If I wanted to change my target framework to something else, I could do that, for example. All right. You shouldn't have to monkey with that hardly ever, if ever. All right. And finally, says the form that's displayed when your program runs. Well, we don't have this form, but it's fine. We're going to fix this up and let's see. I think that's it for this chapter. Yes, it is. So next, I'm not, I'm not going to jump into chapter three. I'm going to go into chapter two. And in chapter two, we will talk about how to design a Windows Forms app. And this should actually go fairly quickly because I've already built the app for you. So I'll be back to handle that in just a couple minutes.